Hey guys, my name is Mitchell Pearson here at Pragmatic Works. And today in this video, I want to talk to you about debugging pipelines in Azure Synapse and Azure Data Factory pipelines. This is a question that I get all the time, right? Because we're obviously doing development, things break, sometimes things don't work as expected. And so how do we go through that process of debugging? Well, we already know that there's a monitoring window that has a lot of built-in capabilities right out of the box, right? So that's a great place to go to see when an activity fails and to see exactly which activity failed within what pipeline. So that's great. Within that, there are error messages that also bubble up and we can take a look at those error messages. And those are actually pretty good as well. I've found those to be very, very intuitive and very helpful. But one of the things that I had back when I used to work with SSIS and building out SSIS packages is I had the capability to kind of debug that with, um, you know, I could disable tasks, right? So I could disable, let's say I had a pipeline that was very robust, very rich, had a lot of, a lot of tasks, right? It was doing a lot of stuff. So downloading files, connecting to a secure FTP, running a stored procedure, doing a lookup, whatever it was, it had a lot going on. And so whenever it came time to debug, right? Whenever it comes time to debug that activity or that package, I would disable a lot of those tasks because I'm just testing one little piece of that code. And if that entire package takes an hour to run, I don't want to take an entire hour to run. How do we do that exact type of debugging activity within pipelines? That's what I want to talk to you about today, setting and using breakpoints and how breakpoints can help you out. Now, the cool thing about breakpoints is they're super easy to use. Unfortunately, everybody overlooks them and when i tell them about them they're like oh that's what that means that's what that is yes that's exactly what that is so let's jump straight into an example here and let me show you what i'm talking about so if i come over here to my azure synapse workspace which is obviously showing on the screen and i'm going to open up this pipeline right here it really does not matter which one of these pipelines i open up but this is the one that i'm going to open up and you notice that right now i have a pretty simple pipeline, right? This pipeline has one basic activity, but in a lot of a lot of situations, your pipeline is going to be doing a lot of orchestration, right? It's downloading some files, running a stored procedure, doing a lookup, doing an if condition, filtering some stuff out. There's a good possibility that you have many more activities than one. And so when you go through the process of trying to resolve one of those activities, you have to run the entire pipeline, which means you have to run all of them. And that's where the problem comes in. That's what we're talking about today in this video. So let me kind of simulate what that might look like. And in order to simulate that and to keep it very simple, I'm going to use the wait activity because the wait activity does not require really, if we're being honest, it does not require any setup or configuration. So we'll pretend putting on our pretending hats here. We're going to pretend like the wait one activity is a really some kind of copy activity. And so we'll say this is downloading files. So we're downloading some files from some third party vendor and we're downloading those into, let's say our Azure data lake, right? Now, once those files are downloaded or file, we then run, let's pretend once again, pretending to set this up very quickly. We then run this stored procedure here and this stored procedure updates some control table, right? So update control table. All right. And then once the control table is updated, we know the file has been downloaded and is ready to process. Then we kick off our data flow. It says, hey, it's time to go. Now, once the data flow is done, we once again are going to update the control table to say, this is how many records were loaded. This is how much time it took. And the file has been processed, right? Something along those lines. And so we'll do that right here. And this would be, you know, something along the lines of, let's just say update control table. Now, if that fails or succeeds, we might do something else there, right? We might say, look, if this succeeds, oh, two. If this, we already had one of those guys there. If this succeeds, we're gonna go over here to this wait activity right here, like so. And if it fails, right? If this process fails right here, I'm gonna add in a failure precedent constraint like so. We're gonna go over here to this activity right there. All right, so here's the situation. We got all of these different activities going on in this pipeline. This one takes about you know a couple of minutes. This one takes about 15 seconds, uh, not even, right? It's a stored procedure. It takes like two seconds. I'm exaggerating just a little bit here. And then this data flow takes like you know 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And then these other tasks take a few minutes as well. Well, I wanna test this out. I've, I've, I've had some failures because this stored procedure has not ran successfully for whatever reason. So I went back to Management Studio, 
we're imagining here, you follow me here. I go back to management studio, I, you know, I, I alter that stored procedure, I drop it, I recreate, I fix some things, I come back in here, I go into the properties of that stored procedure, I update the the output parameters. So, so the output that's coming from here, I remap it to the input parameters. And that's all I want to test. So out of this entire pipeline right here, I want to run only those two activities. I don't want to run the rest of this. I just wanna do a really quick test. How do I do that? That's what we're talking about today. Well, the way that I do that is with breakpoints. Breakpoints are awesome. You find them in a lot of development tools that allow you to kind of work up until a certain point and then it kind of stops, it breaks and so on and so forth. And so what we're gonna do here is you'll notice that when I select the weight activity, just above that weight activity is a little circle. Once again, it's something that is just always right there in front of you and most people miss it entirely, don't realize what that is. And what that is, is that is a breakpoint that says, I want to debug this pipeline until I get to this point. And you'll notice that if I hover over that and wait for the little tooltip to appear, that's exactly what it says debug until so that's it we're going to click that button right there and you'll notice that as soon as i click that all of the other activities in this pipeline have been disabled that is awesome so now i don't have to create a copy of this pipeline and delete all the stuff that i don't want that's what a lot of people do now i can go ahead and click on that debug button right there this is going to run through and it's going to only run those first two activities within my pipeline. There you go. You'll notice nothing else ran. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And that's what this video was about today. I hope you enjoyed this very quick video on debugging your pipelines in Azure Synapse and Azure Data Factory. If you did, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so that you will be notified anytime we do additional videos here at Pragmatic Works. Thank you guys and enjoy.